All right. Good afternoon. Thanks for being on. Um, it's going to be a little different uh, today than most Tuesday press conferences. Um, gave both the players and staff some some much needed time off after Saturday's win. So we have yet to meet as a staff uh, to determine award winners, et cetera. Um, but extremely happy to get the win over TCU. A solid three-phase win. Uh, credit to our fans. I want to say this. I didn't say it after the game, but I think our fans have done a nice job, especially the Kansas State and the uh, um, TCU game of creating a nice game day atmosphere. And it felt it felt like college football at Mountaineer, Mountaineer Field the last two week or last two home games. And I also should note that you know I think our game day and our event management uh, crews have have done a really good job creating home field advantage and kind of making the best out of, out of some bad situations. Um, so I want to recognize them. And then um, I thought our staff, you know, uh, I thought our staff did a really, really good job in the game on Saturday. Uh, special teams, I thought our special teams coaches, um, led by Jeff Koontz, did a really good job with our coverage schemes. I thought we had good answers for them, both uh, in kickoff, which Jamal Dye leads, and on the punt team, which with Jeff Koontz, I thought we did a nice job with that. And then kickoff return led by Chad Scott. Um, really, Winston missed a, missed a cut. We had a chance to house one there, and we just – it wasn't – it was really well blocked, and he's just got to do a better job. And then defensively, the entire staff, you know, led by, you know, uh, Jordan and Jamal. But um, I thought they limited explosive plays. Um, we got multiple hats. We got under the RPO windows, which is important. Um, mixed our coverage looks up. Um, and then offensively, I felt, I felt like we kept them off balance. Uh, they, they did a really good job the two games prior, rushing the passer. I thought we had some good protection answers. Um, we, we changed up our run game a little bit. Um, we used some muddle and some things that kept them off balance. So really credit to, to Jared and Matt and, and Chad and Trickett um, and then Sean Reagan over there on the offensive side as well for, for a really nice plan. Um, also, before I take questions, I want to recognize our Big 12 Players of the Week, which that's important. Uh, T.J. Simmons, uh, two two critical touchdown receptions. Both of them contested catches, which is something that really proud of him. And he's 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 had three uh, really good weeks of practice. And I'm just a firm believer. It doesn't always happen that week, but I'm just a firm believer. If you keep practicing at a high level, that you're going to have success in the game. And he's done that. He's had two weeks in a row where he's played at a high level, and then that's uh, and that's been good to see. And then and then Tyke Smith, who's somebody that I've talked about that was kind of under the radar after the game, and and then for him to win the defense player of the week, um, I think he's he's very very deserving of that. And I, he's I've said this multiple times. I mean, I think he's playing his position as well as anybody in our league. So happy for those guys. And and with that, I'll take some questions. First question today is from Greg Hunter. So, Neil, to the run game, something we've talked about since the end of last season, you, you talked about how much you wanted to improve it. Did you really think that you could get the strides out of it this year that, that and the improvement that you ultimately have? Well, Greg, I think when you look at it as a whole, is I knew we weren't going to get it completely fixed in a year's time. Um, I thought that we, could, that we would make significant gains, uh, which we have, I think to be at a championship level, we've got to continue that improvement. We're not, and you can look at the statistics right now, we're not at a championship level of running the football, but we are much improved. Um, and we devoted a ton, a ton of time, uh, really dating back to, to December of last year, all the way through the month of July, um, it, really working on it. We put a, in, We put a huge emphasis on it and – I think that work has paid off, um, but we're not. It, I don't think it's a finished product. We've we've got we've still got work to do to be able to take it to the next level. Michael Sussman, you're next. What does Ty Key do so well that separates him from other guys at his position? And how high do you think his ceiling is given his playmaking ability? Yeah, so he plays what we call our spear position, which is essentially a nickel position. And at that position, you've got to be able to, to play the run and, and be the seventh fitter in the box. Uh, you've got to be able to play man coverage. You've got to be able to play zone coverage. And you've got to be able to blitz. I mean, you know, so we're asking him a lot. Uh, we're asking a lot of him. And 
most uh, most people playing those positions use them in, in similar fashion. Um, the thing I think that separates him from others is he does a really good job of playing perimeter blocks. He tears off those blocks. Um, he makes he makes plays on the ball, um, which is something that you know you you say well that sounds pretty simple, but there's a lot of guys that play that don't make plays on the ball. He he does a really nice job making plays on the ball, um, and then you know what's his ceiling? I think you know I think he's got several things he's got to continue to work on. Um, I think that if you're looking at, I think his best football is in the future. I have no question about that. I think huge emphasis this offseason will be changing his body, um, improving improving his long speed. He's got great short area quickness, and he, he doesn't run. I mean, he runs well, but I think he can even be faster as he changes his body, his body composition. I think he can improve in his man coverage, and he will. Um, and I think he's he's going to have to be versatile. He needs to be able, be able to play um, in the at, at a high safety and at that nickel position to make himself even a uh, better candidate to play at the next level. Go ahead, Cody Nesper. Hey, Neil. Um, so Jarrett leads the Big 12 in passing attempts right now, but only has three interceptions. Have you ever coached or just seen a quarterback that has a stretch protect, protecting the football like he's on right now? Yeah, we had, we've had a couple different runs. His brother had a run at Tech, and we had a kid named Levi Brown at Troy that, that went on a really long run too. I mean, you know, there's – he's playing at high level. There's some luck, you know uh, – the Tomlinson kid dropped one on Saturday. So, I mean, there's a little bit of um, luck involved on it too. But I think his decision-making has been really good. You know, I, I really do. I think he's done a nice job uh, with his eyes because your eyes are where it gets in trouble. If you don't have your eyes on safeties, you don't have your eyes on windows, that's when your interception numbers go up. Um, really outside of one play on Saturday where he should have taken a sack, he got called for grounding. Um, I think – his when to, when to scramble, when to take the sack, when to throw the ball away. I think those decisions uh, have been much better uh, since since probably the overtimes in Baylor. We'll go to Keenan Cummings. Neil, flipping the gear here a little bit, uh, half or dozen so spots left in this recruiting class. Uh, what positions do you still need to fill? And do you plan on banking a couple for transfers as you've done in, in years past? Yeah, we'll we'll definitely bank one or two. Um, we've got to we've got to improve our depth defensively. Now, we're really young on offense. You know, we'll, we'll only we'll only have a couple seniors over there that are that are playing it all. You know, you never know what's going to happen in the portal, so that that's kind of hard to plan for. I mean, as far as in house, um, but defensively, we've got to improve our depth. You know. Um, at linebacker and in, in the secondary, that's where the emphasis will be as far as finishing this class. Coach, I have a couple questions submitted to us by Bob Hertzel today. First one is uh, when you're out recruiting a, a quarterback specifically, what are the qualities or factors that, that you look for most in, in someone like that? Yeah, so I think there's some givens in quarterbacks. You're looking for um, a high character. You're looking for a guy that has leadership, um, skills, and you want a guy that has an e extremely um, uh, good work ethic. I think those are the givens. Then after that, you want to see the opportunity how they how they perform in pressure situations, um, their ability to throw the ball. What's their release point look like? Because I think there's some things you can fix and some things you can't fix. Um, and then then the role of being a dual threat is is more important now than it ever has been. And so those are some things right off the top of my head that we kind of evaluate. Um, you know, competitiveness is, is something that's hard to do on video. you got to see a kid in person to kind of measure that, um, which in these times makes it, makes it pretty difficult. And then, Coach, a quick follow-up to that was uh, Jarrett. Mm -hmm. How does a guy that comes from a college town and his brother was, you know, of course, productive collegiately and you know, he has good intelligence and skill set, how, how does he come out of high school with no Power 5 offers? You know, and in all fairness, I haven't watched his high school film in a really long time. I know he's pretty skinny coming out, um, but I don't really want to speak to it because um, I'm trying to think. I was in Lexington at the time he was coming out, um, but I haven't watched his high school film for a long time, so I don't want to speak to that. But I, I think that, listen, there's misses in recruiting all the time. This is not a – 
recruiting is not an exact science. I mean, a lot of times you're trying to uh, project, um, and sometimes quarterbacks get over analyzed and rather than finding the good qualities you're always trying to find something a reason not to take them so I think that happens in in especially in quarterback recruiting um but was he under recruited yeah I think w without a doubt um I think he's proven some of his doubters wrong right now go ahead John and Tonic. Hey, uh, we're, we're starting to see some some things with your young offensive lineman. I, I think of the Parker Moore block against TCU, the way he finished that play. Uh, Yates is coming along. Uh, we know about Zach Frazier. What has impressed you most about these young guys? Is it the physical? Is it the mental? And how do you feel about that group moving forward? Well, I think if you're talking about those guys, and, and I'll say this, I think we are a much improved offensive line. We've talked about it, and it kind of goes along with what uh, Greg's question was earlier about the run game. Um, you know, our communication's better. I think our chemistry's better. I mean, we're just um, – we're better up front than we were a year ago. Now, we're still not – I don't think we're at a point uh, where we want to be or where we envision us getting to, but we're better. And a lot of that credit needs to go to Matt Moore. I think he's done a nice job teaching and uh, growing fundamentally and creating chemistry and our communication and all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, and – uh, for those three young guys that you mentioned, you know, Zach Frazier, uh, Brandon Yates, Parker Moore, is the three th or the, the thing that all three of those guys have in common is they love football and it's really, really important. And you say, well, you know, that, isn't that obvious everybody loves football? No, no. I wish that was the case. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I wish we had every, every scholarship, every player on our team just was eating up with football and they were thinking about it when they weren't here. And, and But honestly, that's just not the case. But those three guys, uh, it, it's really important to them. Um, from a preparation standpoint, they, they, they work at it. They watch their opponents. Um, they take coaching. Um, and I think that gives you a real chance. And so hey, I'm excited about them. I, you know, I think we've got to get – we've got to continue to grow them and they're going to be in our program for a long time developing. I think Parker Moore's a great example. Somebody that's just kept kept trusting the climb, kept working, kept putting it in, and then he, and bang, he had some success. He had some success on Saturday, and, and he'll uh, continue to get those opportunities as long as he's productive and prepares in the right way. Next is Kevin Kinder. Coach, uh, status of Josh Chandler, Samito, and the follow-up to that is – if he's unable to go, what does that do with your depth? You had X-ray, obviously, that played well, and you're able to play Dylan Tonker in there, and you know, mm -hmm. at a couple different spots and move those guys around. You have someone else that kind of can kind of fill that backup swing role if he's unable to go. So um, Chandler, it's too early to tell. Like I said, we haven't we haven't had any meetings or anything, so players have had off till this afternoon. So too early to tell, kind of what his availability will be for the Oklahoma game. Um, we'll update you as, as, as we can on that. Um, and then really it, Tony and X-ray played um, every snap in the game at the mic in the wheel positions. Uh, Dylan Tonkery can play the mic, um, practice there. He would be the second mic. And then Noah Guzman is a guy that can play, come in and play at the wheel position if needed to. Jake Abbott can give some snaps at that position as well. Greg Hunter. Coach, follow up with some of the uh, recruiting questions. The mm -hmm. fact that kids have an extra year, everybody on the roster, you know, no, no eligibility change. How does that change recruiting numbers per position, uh, immediate eligibility, you know, guys? Mm -hmm. How's it changed for you? Yeah, it's complicated right now, Greg. It really is. It's, you know, you're dealing with a couple things. You know, you've got a group of, of seniors that can come, but it, it freezes eligibility for everyone. Um, you know, then you've got most of your 21 classes already committed, and then you're going to have uh, a transfer deal that looks like it's going to be kind of where you'll have immediate eligibility. Um, so it's complicated. I think from a recruiting number standpoint, it's going to affect the 22 class more than is the 21 class. Um, we're still waiting for the NCAA to find out exactly what's the date that you have to be back at your 85. It's not going to affect us as much as it will some other programs just because – we're operating with lower scholarship numbers um, anyway. We've got a relatively small senior class. Um, and so I, I think long term it's going to have less effect on us than it will on some others. 
Go ahead, Mike Kazaza. Neil, how are you? Good, Mike. Um, going back to Taiki and, and specifically that position, mm -hmm. um, it, he doesn't look like Giovanni or Quantel last year. And I, I think about like just getting into your defense last year. I think people were maybe fixated on the bandit and that being maybe the profile position. Mm -hmm. It seems like it swung a little bit this way. Um, is it, it does it have a new identity with his skill set or is he kind of who and what you want that position to be? Yeah, I think that at that position, what you're looking for is you want a physical corner, you know, a big physical corner. That's kind of what you want. If you look in the NFL at that position at nickel, that's kind of what it's kind of um, kind of grown into. And that's kind of what we'd like to have is a, a big physical corner. And I think Tyke could do that. He could go out and play in corner in this league um, and be competitive. And so that's kind of what we've done. You know, I think any – from whether it's offense, defense, special teams, you try to feature your best players. And so, without a doubt, we're trying to put him – we feel like he's one of our best football players, period. And uh, we're trying to put him in a position um, because he's – he's if he's not our best tackler, he's in the conversation. And so, we're trying to put him in a position where the ball gets to him. And credit to our defense staff for that. We'll go to Ryan Pritt. Hey, Neil, just kind of riding that a little bit. Um, you know, if, if you looked at your team coming into the year, one of the biggest question marks for you was at corner where you lost two seniors from last year. You know, Dre Sean's a guy that's been playing really well, I think. But you, just kind of asking about your assessment of, of that group as a whole and are they where you thought or hoped they would be at this point in the year? Well, I think they're improving. You know, I, I really – I credit um, – uh, Jamal for I think those guys have really improved Nick Troy and Dreshawn have have basically played exclusively at, at that position um, I think we've done a really good job schematically helping them out and I think that each one of them are, are improving especially in in one-on-one -on -one situations we played more man coverage as the year's gone on uh, which speaks to the the confidence that that we have a, as a staff with Dreshawn and Nick Troy back to Greg Hunter Neil, emotional question. Uh, John Slarman's mm -hmm. uh, passing, you, you want to address what he meant to you? Yeah, really, really tough day yesterday. Um, back in Lexington for, for the for the day, left early yesterday morning and uh, and came back, had an opportunity to speak at his memorial service. And, and really, um, really close friend of mine, a guy that uh, we worked together um, at Troy and at the University of Kentucky. And um, I just think that, uh, a lot of things that are right about our profession. Um, said this about him yesterday. I know. Um, think, you know, he he battled valiantly for over two years. Um, the the cancer that eventually took his life, and I thought he taught some valuable lessons. You know, perspective being one, and um, and the second one is just how you live your life matters. We talk to our kids a lot about. You know how you play the game matters, and 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 just to give you some insight on that, like I just think what you put everything that we do from a practice or a game is always is always filmed, and I always and I tell our kids this, and this is something that John and I talked a lot about when we were at Troy, as we were kind of kind of starting this deal is is what you put on film matters. It really tells your story. So if you're a tough guy, well, your 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 video should show that you're a tough guy. If you're physical, it should show physical. If you're if you're a guy that's an overachiever, strainer, that's what your video should do. And and I really think that you know how you how you live your life matters. And he he lived with such humility um, and put others first. And tough day, tough day, man. Um, really um, love that guy. I uh, really feel for his wife Leanne and his and his four young kids, um, and and feel for that football program too. Uh, a guy that that really meant a lot to them, and and rightfully so. It's but a tough time, man. He's forty five years old, and and, that, and that's way too soon. Mike, we'll finish up with you. A couple weeks ago, you said that you probably had to do a better job as a staff rolling in defensive linemen early. I think you had a bunch in the first series, definitely in the first quarter. Um, did you see a difference there? And did you see anything that would you can keep that moving forward and let that spread and help everybody else out up front, two of the final two games? Yeah, so defensively, um, we got burned by that against Texas Tech. And, and that, was our, that was our fault as a staff. And 
sometimes, you know, and you all have heard me say this before, as coaches you're always reluctant uh, to play guys that don't have experience. Well, they only get experience if you play them, you know what I mean? So, um, and I thought we just – we we played our, our defensive linemen too much um, early in the Texas Tech game, and they didn't have enough gas and tank in the second half. And so, against Texas and against TCU, we played them early. And I think our guys, our, our first group played better in the second half because of that. And so, we've got to continue to get better. You know, the Quay Mazes, the Jalen Thorntons, uh, those guys got to continue to come on. But they're guys that we have a lot of, lot of trust in, and, and we, we believe they'll continue to get better.